Hey guys, this is Jonathan Swinney or CNC Vidify here on YouTube, and this is my science video. Ooh, about <laughs> about scientific theory versus scientific law. Okay, the inspiration for this video came from actually evolution. This, uh, I guess, a religious person, you know, was arguing against, you know evolution is how they not God created the universe and creationism you know like the earth is less than 6,000 years old and we were created in our current form well, evolution you know is that you know over time we change and adapt you know natural selection sexual sexual selection and, and all that good stuff and it has created variety in that we did not start out as we currently are when they said something very interesting they said well, evolution is just a theory. No, 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 no. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and it got me thinking. You know, a lot of people don't know what a scientific theory is. Or, you know, what a scientific law is. And, and it is something you need to know, because a scientific theory, you know, is different from a regular theory that you would have, you know, like, in social studies class about, you know, I have a theory, if Hitler didn't live, then, you know, there would have been another Hitler, or World War II, you know, would have happened in a later, at a later date, with a different country, you know, in place of the Nazis. Okay, a scientific theory is not the same. And of course, if you talk about scientific theory, you have to talk about scientific law. You know, the two go hand in hand. You know, they're very different, but they are very similar and important to learn together. And today we will be talking about the difference between a scientific theory, a scientific law, and we're going to like give some examples, you know, to further that point of what they are. Because they can be very confusing. And especially, you know, some of you probably know you've probably been to, like, a class and they give you these long definitions that just don't make sense. And I think that's a big problem. You know, a lot of the educators don't take time to actually, you know, tell you, like, a precise definition. They give you this long, cumbersome definition that's very confusing. And, you know, for someone who's maybe in high school or something, you know... So that's just going to make it more confusing for you for the class. Especially, you know, if it's something that's really, really, you know, basic. That's needed so you can learn other stuff. Because a lot of science, you know, you build upon it. If you don't know this, well, then you can't do this. The same way in math. You know, I had to do Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then Free Calculus. You know, it has to be in steps. You got to learn one level on another. Same with science. And a very important level to science is scientific theory and scientific law. Scientific theory. An explanation for an observation that is substantiated by considerable a body of evidence. Or how nature works. Examples of scientific theories include the cell theory, big bang theory, evolution, general relativity, and the atomic theory. A set of observed regularities expressed in a concise verbal or mathematical statement. Or what nature does under certain circumstances and is a good prediction of what nature will do under those circumstances, and is often time mathematical. Both are based on tested hypotheses. Both are supported by a large number of empirical data. Both unify a particular field. Both are widely accepted by scientists within its respected field. Both could be proven wrong if the evidence supports so. Remember, the nature of science is to question things. 
And if a particular, you know, theory or law, you know, some aspects or of it are proven wrong, that does not mean it's useless. You can look at uh, with Einstein's general relativity versus you know, Newtonian physics. You know, general relativity relativity proved you know not all Newtonian physics apply in every circumstance. But that doesn't make, you know, the Newtonian physics obsolete. You know, you still learn them in school and they are very important because they do apply to most life. And remember, scientific knowledge is strengthened by people questioning. And you need to question the world around you. That's how we get stuff like penicillin or, you know, flight in airplanes. Or big towers like the World Trade Center, uh, Empire State Building, the Willis Tower. It's by us being curious and going out there and finding it. So if you have a question that's bugging you, go out there and find the solution. And on a side note, you don't believe in evolution or scientific theory you accept it okay you believe in God but you accept science okay you accept that the evidence in general point toward that conclusion and the evidence points to the conclusion that evolution is what happened yes you know some fine details about it may be disputed but in general the evidence supports evolution so I would do so I accept evolution just as gravity you don't believe in gravity you accept gravity well thank you guys this is my first educational video uh, probably hopefully not my last uh, if you guys have any education concerns or questions you need, just message me and I will try to make a video on that subject. Uh, I don't know everything, but I will try. Because I do think it's very important that we learn stuff. Even stuff we don't want to learn. Even if, like me, I want to be a journalist and entertainer. But I just love learning science and social studies and stuff. Because it is important. Everything you learn is important and you can apply it you will be amazed at stuff you learn you know in English or social studies or math you know you can apply to the real world not all of it but a good portion you can well thank you for watching my video and I hope you have a good day